have to tell you, when I found out Baby Lock was coming out with a double cording or a double welting foot, I was so excited because this has been one of my favorite feet for a very long time. Um, so double welting or double cording looks like this, and I'm gonna show you how to use it. But not only do we not have a double welting or slash double cording foot, we have two, and we're the only ones that have two different sizes, which is really great, because now I can make two different sizes based on whatever cord I wanna use. So this one is the seven to eight millimeter, and it's got a bigger groove. This one is the four to six millimeter, and it has a smaller groove. So I'm gonna show you how to make this, but if you'd like to see more techniques with the double welting, you need to check out my zippers video because my zippers uh, segment on all in zippers, I use these feet for the zippers, perfect zipper foot, just so you know. All right, so let's get started. Um, I've got some different cord I wanna show you. This is the valance cord. The valance cord and the standard belt cord are the same size but one is softer than the other, so it depends on what you're doing. If you're gonna do this on upholstery or something hard, like where you're gonna glue the cord down, I would probably use this one on something soft, like pillows, quilts, uh, other projects, you wanna use the softer cord. The, I know this one looks fatter, but when, it, when you actually sew it, it smushes down to about this size. Then we also have the medium welt cord, and that works great for the larger foot. So you can use the medium welt cord for the 78 millimeter, the valance and the regular standard welt for the four to six millimeter. So we'll put this on. We're doing the four to six here. And normally when I do this, I put invisible thread in the bobbin. I use polyester invisible thread. I'm not gonna do that today because I want you to see the stitching so you can see why you need to use invisible thread. I have a piece of fabric cut uh, on the bias and you have to use bias cut fabric, otherwise it's just too hard to work. So this is cut diagonally on the bias. So I've got my welt cord. This is a polyester valance welt. We call this the valance welt because it's soft and you can put it on the bottom edge of valances, but it's also really nice in quilts. It's really nice to put in garments because it's got a softer hand than our standard cord, standard cord which is just a little bit stiffer. It's still 100% polyester. It's still wrapped, not twisted, so it will give you a nice piping or welt cord. So, unlike when we make our standard cord, our regular piping, we, when we normally do, we fold it in half. This time we're not gonna fold it in half. We're just gonna fold it over a little bit, just enough to catch. And put that under the machine. I've selected just a straight stitch in center needle position. So we want to leave our needle in the center for this. And unlike, you know, before when we move the needle closer to the cord, we want to stay right down the middle with all steps on this. So again, I'm working from the bottom side. This is the back side. This bottom side will be my right side. Keeping the cord pushed into the fold there. And again, you're just gonna sew just enough to catch. I, remember, I, sewed, I cut this about two and a half inches wide. If you're using the medium size cord with the bigger foot, then cut it about three inches. You wanna have plenty to work with. So now we're going to bring the other cord up and you're going to lay it side by side. Remember, there's two grooves here. So those two grooves are going to hug both cords and sew right down the middle. Then you're going to wrap it and you want to wrap it fairly snug. It's a big beginner mistake that people tend to wrap it a little loose because they want the thread to fall in between. And when you do that, you end up with a sloppy trim. You, you don't want that. So you're going to kind of keep it nice and snug and then you put it under the foot and it's really, you're going to kind of go by the feel. But the groove's got like an indentation here, kind of like my fingernail, and it's gonna go right down the middle. So we're gonna wrap that right over the top. Hold that over, so you'll just have to trust me that that's where it needs to be. And then you're gonna use your stiletto to hold everything in place. The beauty of this foot is it does do a good job holding everything down. And remember, this is going to be the bottom side. 
One thing that's different about double welt compared to single welt is double welt is used as an application. It's actually applied to the top where single welt cord is an insertion. So keep that in mind. Let's turn it over and there's our right side. You can see sometimes those rows of stitching are pretty close together but sometimes they're not. They're off a little bit maybe right here. Okay, so that's why you'd use that polyester invisible thread, not nylon, because nylon will melt when you iron it. You want to use polyester invisible thread. So now, from the back side, I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm just going to trim off this excess fabric, trimming it fairly close. And here's another reason why you want to cut this on the bias. If you don't cut it on the bias, it's going to come apart. So cutting it on the bias keeps it together. And there we have our trim ready to be sewn onto a project. Okay, so because this is on the bias, we can shape it, we can change it, we can do loops. So we flip it over, so the cut side is down here at the bottom. This was our bobbin thread. And we can shape it. Again, take advantage of that pivot mode on your sewing machine, okay? Because with this, with the pivot mode, you can stitch one or two stitches, stop, pivot, stop, pivot. So if you watch, I'll sew just a few stitches, and then adjust, and then adjust. While we're talking about the pivot mode, let me share a little bit something about the the uh, settings menu because a lot of people forget that they're there. I even forget they're there sometimes. But if you go into the settings menu and you just scroll through, there's 10 pages of settings that you can adjust. And one of my favorite ones, did I go by it? No, here it is. Right here. Pivot height. I can take that pivot height and I can adjust it. I've already got it at the highest height. Because I sew thicker fabric, I like to raise that up. So 3.2 is the default setting because that's in black, but I bring it all the way up to 7.5. So that way when I'm doing something like a fat cord, it's going to pivot high enough that I can pivot over that cord. So that's a really nice feature that you want to take advantage if you have that on your, on your baby lap. I'm just going to give this a little pressing here. And there we have a nice little embellishment using our double welting foot.